This is a Channel Africa podcast. You can also get Channel Africa on satellite, PAS10, DSTV Audio Bouquet 802, and Open View Bouquet, Channel 628. The damage has been huge. It has been affecting public transport operators and general members of the public. And it's been also affecting businesses. Businesses were complaining that uh, they are unable to move their goods from one place to another. So the whole economy was being affected by the fuel shortages. Um, and, and let's talk a little bit about the, the just that trickle-down effect that you say the whole economy has been affected. I mean, we've, we certainly have seen riots in the country already. Um, what have the trickle-down, I mean, how has society even responded to the fuel crisis? Yes, it was a ticking time bomb because uh, on social media, people had started to politicize it. Um, they were started questioning what is causing these fuel shortages, particularly because uh, there were reports suggesting that uh, uh, the government, particularly the king, was establishing a separate fuel company by the name of FuelX, and that company was competing unfairly with the uh, uh, other companies within the energy industry. I, I know that w- where we've seen previous cases of fuel shortages, I mean, not so long ago last year, it was Malawi that we were reporting was having massive uh, sh- fuel shortages. Um, and what we had seen in that case was that um, uh, motorists had started going into the black market then to access fuel. And is this a concern, Eswatin? Yes, um, that, that has started. That one, that one has started happening uh, because the people were sourcing fuel from other fuel stations, and they were they have started selling it, particularly in the rural areas. But just some few hours ago, um, I think about two hours ago, I was speaking to the marketing director at Gulf Filling Station, and uh, he sent a, a formal response saying. Uh, the situation has been normalized. Uh, all the fuel stations, uh, the Gulf film station that was facing this challenge, uh, there's fuel now. So the situation seems to be normal now, and unless we receive uh, reports to the contrary. Surely, though, when you have a fuel shortage and you know you you're getting reports that things have normalized, there's a concern that you could run into these shortages again. I mean, is there any sort of guarantee? Um, that the Eswatini economy is not going to further be interrupted by these these shortages. And already there is no guarantee because this this whole thing has been triggered by a conflict of, of interest at political level. As I've just mentioned earlier, um, there's a company that by the name of FuelX that is uh, somehow controlled by royalty. So some of these things, uh, the, uh, the the fuel shortages are as a result of the power struggle within the Ministry of Natural Resources and Energy. Uh, I will make an example. Gut filling stations have been complaining that they're being frustrated they are being stopped from uh, sourcing fuel in Mozambique. Mm. They are forced to, forced to source, source fuel where Carmen feels uh, she will benefit more at, within the South African Customs Union. So there are many factors that are influencing the fuel shortages in Swaziland, and I hope these issues will be resolved as a matter of ages, because uh, uh, particularly because this uh, South African Customs Union region, uh, the Minister of Finance once suggested that they will start uh, uh, channeling some of the fuel companies to source fuel within the circle region so that government can benefit more on, on taxes and uh, and increase the SACU uh, received. So I think government will sort this thing as a matter of ages because at the end of the day, the people are suffering. That podcast was courtesy of Channel Africa. The African Perspective.